Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Well, I get a lot of questions on how to use mapping. Um, so I thought we would look into all things mapping in this video. So we're going to look at how to use mapping function, how to use map substring, and um, we're going to look at how they can be uh, super useful in your script. So let's get into it. Now I have, I have some products here in my uh, main fact table and if we look at our table I've actually loaded all the products and what I want to do is for each product I want to map what product category it is and for me the product category comes from um, comes from a different file so let's see how to create it so first things first we're gonna say we're gonna first create a mapping table and let's just name it for convenience sake map category name and instead of a regular load what we're going to do is a mapping load and we're going to say mapping and then load now basically what this mapping table is is it's a temporary table so so what i want to do is in this table i have the same products that's actually here and then i have the category name and what i want to do in my main table is take the products from here and take and apply the category name so my product is the key so in mapping you always need a key and a value so we see here that my product becomes the key and category is the value two things first is you load the key first and then you load the value and it has to be one to one that is one key and one value if you have duplicates then it's difficult for click because it gets confused what is what what should be actually applied to the key here right so you can't have one key with two different values so you should always have one key and one value so now we're loading map category name and what we're saying is hey create a temporary table uh, called map category name and then do a mapping load and in that mapping load cat product is my key category name is the value from this particular table and then later on let's call this our fact table and here, what we're going to do is once this is loaded in the next um, operation, what you can say is, so you have product here, and now we're going to call our function called apply map. So what we can do is do an apply map. And what is the map that you want to apply? That is this one, because this is the name of the mapping table that you've just created. So this is the map that I want to apply. And where do you want to apply it to? Well, I want to apply it to the key. What is the key? The key is the product here. So comma product. So as you see, and then in case you don't find it, you can just say um, leave it as null. And I'm going to give this as category name. So now what click is going to do is it's going to look in this particular table. And for every product it sees, it's going to bring in the value and then it's going to map it here and let's load it and now if we actually add our category now each product will have a category name that's pretty cool now what we can do here is well let's add a different table so that then we can bring in our next function that is the map substring so let's create a new mapping table here right so i'm gonna say map code and here i'm doing an inline load that is mapping load instead of from a file i'm just typing in the values so what i did is i'm gonna look here i took a bunch of products and i've put the products here and for each product i've given it a code and the code is N and R, R and S, O, R, so on and so forth. Just some random code just to show you. And now let's actually apply this as well. So what we're going to do, this is the mapping table. So I'm going to say here, apply map. Now in this, we have, let me make a space here. So we're, so it's clear product is the key code is the value. So I'm going to apply the map map code. Where do I want to apply it to? I still want to apply it to the product because that's my key. Um, if it's not available, then just leave it as null. And then I'm going to give this one as 
this table as code. So now what it's going to do is click is going to create a table where it's going to take these five products and then it's going to see what's the code. And here I'm applying the map. So it's going to apply the map code to the products and it's going to bring in these values. If, if here the products are available in this one. So now, as you see, I've only taken the first five. So we should have null here and we should click should actually apply the codes for the rest of them. Uh, for which it's available. So let's load it. And you actually see here that map code five lines were fetched. So we should have it right. Uh, now let's go here and let's actually see. Let's add the code table. Code column and we have it here. So when I apply, you see here. So NRRS has been applied to these products and it's come from this table. So this is the product NR. RS. Okay, great. Now this has segued perfectly into our map substring function. So what can we do now? So for each of these products, I've mapped a code that is NNR. But you know what? I could actually have a different table where these codes can be expanded. For example, instead of mapping for this product, this is NR. Maybe NR stands for something. In this case, it stands for new release. Instead of typing new release, new release over here everywhere. I could have a different table where I could just map the substring. So say that N actually means new, R means release. So I can have a different table. So let's do that. So let's create a new table here. I'm going to call the table map code description. And well, it's going to be a inline. So I'm going to say the code n actually means new and so i have I give a space so code and description so now we have code n is new here r is actually release so this is just one line but now what i can do is well we could call a map instead of applying map what we can do is map a substring so now for these products i've mapped the code and for these codes i can map the substring for this what is n I can expand it using this. So how do we do that? Well, now I have map code description and here we have code. Um, so let's just load all the tables again because um, so you're applying this mapping function here. So the column called code is only available once you have loaded here. So next in the next load, I can actually do the operations on code on this particular column. So here I'm going to say map substring. What is the substring that I want to, what is the name of that mapping table? And that is this one here, map code sub code description. And I'm going to say, but to which one do you want to apply to? I want to apply to this particular code. And I can name this as my code description. Right. I hope that um, this is quite clear. So you, I'm, I'm mapping the code and once and I'm trying to expand that code using a different table which has the explanation. So and what instead of apply map, I'm saying map the substring. What is the where is the substring stored? It's stored in this table called map code description. And here whenever in this particular column, at least whenever it sees an R, it's going to map it to um, release and O becomes old. So when you see here, it's N and R. Technically, it should instead of N and R, it should give us the uh, description here. Let's load it and see how it uh, turns out. Great. And you also see here that we have five for map code description. So we have actually Let's see how it goes. So now we still have the column called code, but we have created a new column called code description where we have applied the substring. So let's go and call it in and see how it looks. Code description. Right. Perfect. So here, every time it was N, the substring function has replaced N with new. It has replaced R with release, S with stop, 
as we have in this particular table. So that's how you can use map and map substring. So these two are super, super useful. It can help you a lot. Um, sometimes you don't need to join tables. Mapping works just as fine and it's quite fast as well. So this was mapping and uh, map substring. Hope it was helpful. I would really appreciate if you left a like um, and uh, sign up for the newsletter below so you get to learn more ab about Click, more about BI, and um, you'll be in touch with more updates. Hope this was helpful. See you in the next one. Cheers.